everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Passengers, a game designed by Jorst Dus and published by Fable Smith. We're using a prototype copy of the game here, and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to it. In Passengers, players are soul guides, guiding the souls of recently departed humans to the afterlands on one of two boats. But among you there are traitors, soul guides trying to smuggle demons into the afterlands in place of the deserving passengers. Each round players will load up the boats with passengers and then take a secret bid to determine which boat sails away to the afterland. And then once three rounds are finished, each side will gain points based on how many of their passengers they've brought in and how tactically they've matched up the colours of those passengers. Passengers plays between four and eight players, and first we'll take you through how to play the five and seven player games. This is the simplest version of the game, featuring only the soul guides and the demon smugglers. To set up, separate the pile of passengers into two stacks. This will be 12 souls with the circle icon and 12 demons with the star. Set aside the Yesta card, which shows both. Shuffle each deck face down. Now create the faction pile by taking three soul cards and two demon cards if you're playing with five players and four souls and three demons if you're playing with seven. Shuffle this deck and deal one to each player. Look at your own cards secretly. If you draw a soul, you'll be a soul guide for this game, and if you draw a demon, you'll be a demon smuggler. Now deal each player one card from the remaining soul deck, and one from the remaining demon deck. This means all players will have three cards. These will be two souls and a demon if you are a soul guide, or a soul and two demon cards if you're a demon smuggler. Cards can come in three colours, blue, green and red. You'll need to remember which faction you were, because from this point on all three of the cards in your hand are treated the same way and will ultimately be loaded onto the boats during the game. Find the two round one boats and lay them on the table. Take any complete set of ten numbered gift cards and lay those out in numerical order. You can use any one of the sets of gifts except for this one with the four dots. This is specifically for the four player game. Place all of the voices, which are used for voting, and the three coloured masks nearby. Give each player a double sided voting disc and choose one player at random to gain the master coin and be the first player in the first round. Finally, you'll resolve a once off night phase. The demon smugglers are less numerous in number, but they make up for it by knowing who the other demon smugglers are. To resolve this, one player instructs all players to close their eyes, and then the demon smuggler players to open their eyes and identify each other. You won't actually show each other your cards, I'm just doing this to indicate open eyes. Demon smugglers then close their eyes, and all players open their eyes again. You're now ready to play. A round of passengers is played in three phases. First, placing passengers, then using gifts, and then voting. The first phase is placing passengers. This will be resolved in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table until each player has taken one turn. On your turn, choose any one card from your hand and then place it face down into any empty seat on a boat. Take a number of voices based on the number of voices shown on that slot. So here the player would take one voice. Then take the gift card from the display whose icon matches that seat on the boat. Play now passes to the next player. There are no restrictions to the placement of passengers at seven players. While at five players, you cannot place more than three passengers on the same boat. This placement would not be legal. The second phase is using gifts, and here each player will resolve the ability on the gift card that they gain when placing a passenger. 
This phase is resolved in numerical order of gift. So this player would take the first turn. Then the lantern would be resolved, then the scroll, and so on. These have a variety of effects, mostly looking at cards that are face down to gain information, or manipulating where they are placed on the boats. And I'll show you some of the gifts in more detail later on. Third is the voting phase. Simultaneously, all players choose whether they want the wolf boat or the raven boat to be the one which goes to the afterlands. Players hold their token in hand and then will all simultaneously reveal. The player holding the master coin will use that to vote. Now count up the number of voices for each of the boats, that is, voices held by players who voted for that boat. Here the raven boat has seven voices and the wolf boat has two, so the raven boat wins the vote. If the voices are tied, here it's five to five, then the master coin breaks the tie. The winning boat sails away to the afterlands. Place it off to the side, with room for the round two and three boats to be placed down beneath it later on. The losing boat is simply placed out of play, but importantly leave the passenger cards face down on both boats. Finally, set up for the next round. Players return their gifts to the lineup and their voices to the pile. And place the two boats which correspond to the next round. You'll now resolve each of the next two rounds in the same way. After three rounds are complete, the game is over and you'll determine which team has won. At this point, you'll have three selected boats lined up like so. Reveal all of the passenger cards, and if a card has a mask on it, which will come as a result of having played a mask gift card, then you'll flip the card over and place the mask on top. Now count up the final scores. The soul guides gain one point for each soul on the boats and bonus points for having matching coloured souls in the same boat. These bonus points equal one fewer than the number of matching souls. For the purposes of matching, a passenger with a mask is considered to be the colour of that mask. So without the mask this would be a blue soul, but with the mask it is a red one. In this case, the soul guides score six points for souls, and a bonus two points for these three matching souls, a total of eight. The demon smugglers score one point for each demon on the boats, and bonus points for having demons adjacent to matching coloured souls. Adjacency can count horizontally or vertically, and if there are any empty spaces in the boat, adjacency skips over those empty spaces. So in this case, the demon smuggler would get three points for demons. This is adjacent to one matching soul for a bonus point. This is adjacent to one matching soul for a second bonus point. And this is adjacent to one matching soul for a third bonus point, a total of six. The team with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, whichever team is holding the master coin breaks the tie. As you can see, Passengers is a game of hidden information, shared incentives, and therefore a lot of lying and bluffing. Players aren't allowed to show or look at the face down passenger cards, but they can say whatever they want about those cards. Both teams have a way of gaining bonus points by getting souls tactically into the right places in the afterlands, and therefore both teams will be trying to get souls to the afterlands during the game. But it's up to the demon smugglers to use their knowledge of who is who to manipulate the placements to their advantage. Critical to all of this is the gift cards, as this is what will introduce information to the game. As mentioned in setup, there are multiple different sets of gift cards, and I'll just show you set one here. There's the canteen, which has no effect but gets you the most voices. The chromatus forces all other players to reveal how many of a certain colour of card they have in hand, without revealing the cards. The Hamza Hand and Seapore let you secretly look at one of the cards that someone else has placed on a boat. The Hamza Hand near the start of the using gifts phase and the Seapore near the end. 
With the lantern, two players of your choice must show you one card from their hands. With the water lily, give another player one of your voices and then reveal the card they played this round for all to see. Vapors lets you reveal a passenger who is already in the afterlands. The scroll lets you swap two passengers who are in this round's boats. The mask, which we alluded to before, lets you take one of the remaining mask tokens and place it on a passenger, changing its colour. And finally, number 9 makes the master coin change hands. In this case, you must give it to a player other than yourself. All of these give you different opportunities to learn about the actions and factions of your opponents, and the conversations you'll have will try to trick them in a lie, so you can find out where their loyalties lie. When playing with six or eight players, you'll introduce a third role to the game, the Yester. When setting up the factions, you'll shuffle the Yester card in with the same faction card you'd use at one lower player count. The Yester's eyes remain closed during the night phase. General gameplay is unchanged. You'll play the six player game under five player rules, and you'll play the eight player game under seven player rules. All differences come in final scoring. For basic scoring, the Yester counts as both a soul and a demon, so both teams would gain one point if the Yester were on the boats. For colour matching purposes, the Yester has no colour, and so will score no bonus points for either team, unless masked. Finally, the Yester's score is fixed. If you're playing an 8 player game, the Yester always scores 8.5 points. At 6 players, the Yester always scores 6.5 points. To win the game, the Yester needs to make sure that both other teams score fewer than that fixed number of points. With a special variation, you can also play passengers with four players. The factions in the game will be two soul guides, one demon smuggler and the Esther. You'll use the special four player gift set. Then you'll create a dummy pile of passengers by shuffling together three random souls and three random demons. These will make the game play like a six player game with two dummy players. Each round, before the start of the place passenger phase, whoever is last in turn order draws the top card of the dummy pile and then places it on any space without looking at it and without gaining rewards. Whoever is second last draws the next dummy card and places it into a space on the other boat. You'll then resolve placing passengers as normal starting from the first player and respecting the placement restrictions usually in place for a six player game. There is no change to final scoring and the Yester's final score is six and a half. And that's how to play Passengers. Check out the project page of Passengers. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.